Kenya is investigating claims of sexual assault committed near a British training base north of Nairobi. Locals revealed horrific tales of gang rape and other forms of sexual violence by British soldiers to a parliamentary committee investigating the troops' conduct. So from that, you know, snippet, you get the message, right? So I saw this, this story actually on several newspapers today. And uh, like, for, for example, this is one from the Russia uh, Times says the British soldier rapists leave behind children in Kenya, right? And it's uh, they are quoting CNN on this one. You go to the CNN where the original story is, you find they say that the British army trains in Kenya. Many women say soldiers raped them and abandoned children they fathered. So uh, now that's the expose. So in a nutshell, basically, is that the British soldiers have been accused of raping thousands of Kenyan women while training in Kenya over decades. It's not just something that have happened recently. We have one of the girls in this video being 17 years, almost 18 years, and she's uh, an orphan because her mother died because of that, of what happened to her. You know, she had to live with depression to a point that she died about five years ago. The girl must have been 12 years. And the girl is living alone. The family where the wife, this Samburu man comes from, rejected her after she delivered a white, as they were saying, a white kid. So according to their society, a woman who gets a baby out of wedlock uh, is not allowed back to the community. And apparently it's easy to do with the black or other Samburu men because you can cheat and lie that it's your husband, but you can't do the same if the baby comes out Chinese or white. So when the baby was white, they knew. They knew the baby did not belong to the man who is her husband. So she was kicked out of the, her village, and she went to live in the nearest urban area. And uh, she died leaving the baby or the girl at the age of 12. Now the girl has been living alone, According to her, now she's 17. Now you can imagine the kind of life she's doing. She's living to be able to pay her bills if she's an orphan and she's colored. Anyway, so imagine a scenario where you're moving to the most isolated frontier parts of Kenya. Because every country in Africa has those frontier parts. Most countries do. Uh, where you have... Uh, the sparsely populated area where you have these pastoralists or people who keep cattle and camels. And that's the part where you s this British troop go to train because the area is barely inhabited. And as they are training there in the semi-arid parts of Kenya, in the northern part of Kenya, they come across these Samburu women who walk more than 40 kilo or 20 kilometers to get water 20 kilometers they, so i've seen a, a video saying that they walk long distance to the nearest aquifer that has water and sometimes they also walk a similar distance to look for food or to trade to the nearest uh, shopping center sometimes they do the same to get firewood so they walk long distance and when they come across these british troops they are raped according to the report and after they do that they part ways and the ladies proceed back to their village with the shame after nine months you know they have to explain how they came about having a white baby so that's when they are kicked out of their villages and according to one of the ladies in her community you cannot report rapes if you are raped in the bush you cannot report it because it's a shame in that community. So they have to keep quiet. Now, the problem comes in, in when the baby is supposed to be white. That's where the problem is. And, and now that's the story. So I watched the video. I want you to go to you know, YouTube and look for it there. It's just saddening that after 60 years of independence, the British still operate in Kenya the same way the French operate in West Africa. Uh, I don't know the benefit Kenya gets out of that, but they still behave like the French in West Africa. 
they they are they, in this case they are committing crimes they some really some ladies were killed by these troops there's a lady three men or three soldiers three british soldiers uh pretended to pay for one night and that they went to this lodging and they had you know you, you understand what they did there and after that instead of paying her they strangled her they killed her and then they dropped her body in a septic tank or septic pit in the compound and left and then three weeks later the body was discovered and no one knows the names of those guys the troops that were there when they booked the room they never gave their identification documents so the owners of the tiny hotel or the airbnb didn't know the kind of men they were they just accepted the money and gave them a key to the room so those things happen and and we are still wondering what does kenya get out of this she is just 17 but marian lives alone in this single room house a mixed race girl in rural kenya where nobody looks like her they actually call me poor white girl i don't know why they call me poor white girl they always say why are you here just look for a connection that you will go to your own people you don't belong in, in here marian's mother lydia juma was among hundreds of women who accused soldiers from the british army training unit kenya batuk of rape she was interviewed in this 2011 documentary because in our tribe you, we can't report that thing it's a big shame if you go and say that you have, you, you have been raped. Lydia Juma died two years after that interview, and Marian has never met her father. She has to fend for herself in a society that ostracizes her. You have not lost hope of finding your father someday. No, I've never lost hope. Mixed race children keep being born in the remote villages where the British Army trains in Kenya. Generica Namoru says she was in a consensual relationship with a British soldier while she worked at their base, but she claims he has never supported her since she gave birth. I'm a woman with a white child. It's not easy for my family, especially because the child is expensive. She's suffering for no good reason. So you just want him to take responsibility for his daughter? Yeah, nothing else. For him, I, I want him to take care of the education health have you ever received a cent from him since she was born i've never received any cent generica is jobless and says she has unsuccessfully tried to petition local authorities and the british army to find her ex-boyfriend the british high commission told cnn it cooperates with local child support authorities in paternity claims but the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights says the UK government has made no effort to hold soldiers accountable in such cases. This 